I finally finished that kit bash of the Holt Hotel, and I'm going to show it to you on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more videos about model railroading tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can get notified every time I upload a new episode. Well, I've been working on a kit bash of the historic Holt Hotel in downtown Wichita Falls, Texas for about two months now. I've already shared with you three videos in this series showing how I used three of Design Preservation Models Hilltown Hotels to kit bash together to make the main part of the structure, as well as some modular wall sections from the same company to make the upper floors of this hotel. I showed you how I did the basic and the detail painting and installed the windows. And I showed you how I built shadow boxes in order to light certain portions of the building to make it come to life. Well, today I'm going to bring you the fourth and final installment in this video series. We're going to do some final interior detailing in the lobby area and install the last bit of lighting. We're going to install window shades and curtains throughout the building. We're going to finish the roof and put on some roof details, including a rooftop sign for the Holt Hotel. And then I'll be building some awnings to go on the windows on the first floor. Finally, I'm going to put the structure on my layout and show you exactly where it fits and how it looks on my layout. Well, that's a lot to get done, so we better get over to the workbench and get started. We're going to pick up where we left off with the Holt Hotel. And I was ready to start installing window shades and curtains in the hotel uh, at the end of our last video. Looking at this prototype photo, this reference photo, uh, I know it's not probably real clear on camera, but you can definitely see that the windows, most of them have the shades completely drawn. Uh, there's some of them that have shades partially drawn, and I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but several of these, behind the shade, there is a curtain that's either completely drawn or partially drawn, or in some cases like these here, the window is just completely open. So I want to simulate this effect on my model. So the first thing I did was I went to Google Images, and I just looked for some pictures of curtains. I wanted something fairly nondescript, brown, uh, like you would see in a, in a hotel, something that would definitely keep out the light. I found this picture of a shower curtain, and I thought that uh, the pleats in it looked really good. I thought it would make a, a, a great looking uh, uh, set of curtains for my model. So I cropped it down so that I have just the curtain with the pleats, and then sized it to uh, fit my in-scale windows. And then I literally just copied and pasted it uh, and filled up a sheet of cardstock with, uh, with these windows. And so I literally was able to print 150 uh, of these curtains on one sheet. And I actually only ended up needing about 30 or 35. So, uh, you know, good way to be able to do an entire building uh, or even several structures with curtains with just a piece of cardstock and some ink. Uh, for the shades themselves, I also wanted cardstock. I didn't have any white cardstock, but I did have some of these punch-out business cards that come in the full sheets uh, that you can print, and I just punched out a few of these, and these were really easy to cut to, to size, and uh, these worked great for my, for my window shades. So let me show you now. I've actually already done this step, but I want to show it to you here. Uh, here is the structure after the window uh, shades and curtains have been installed. You see many of them, of course, have shades completely drawn. Uh, some, like, like this, has the shade completely open but with a closed curtain. Uh, some, like this, have a shade partially open and the curtain partially open. And then, of course, there are some that have a shade partially open with no curtain showing and some that are just completely open uh, altogether. So it's a little bit of variety there. Uh, I also put some, some shades partly open in some of the windows that are lit, and you'll see that uh, a little bit later. Uh, I'm going to turn around here. I have the back off of the building, and I just wanted you to see kind of how I glued these in place. Literally, a lot of these where I have large blocks of windows that have the shades closed, I just cut long strips, uh, glued it in with some of that canopy glue in between the windows, and it held it in real nice. Uh, other places, I, I cut strips that were shorter to do the partially closed shades. And then, of course, the little brown uh, pieces of cardstock you see there are, are my simulated curtains. So with this, uh, this step has, has come out really, really well. And I 
think it's going to give a real pleasing look and a very prototypical look, according to the photos that I have, of what the Holt Hotel looked like. The next step that I'm going to take on the hotel is this roof sign. You, you can't get a real good view of it here. I'll, I hope to show you a, a better picture. I, I have one somewhere uh, of this roof sign that uh, literally says hotel on it. That originally said Holt Hotel. And uh, but in latter years, after it no longer uh, belonged to the, the Holt family and no longer was the Holt Hotel itself, they took the Holt off uh, for a little while. I think it had another name up there today. Uh, it uh, is actually a set of apartments. And so they'd left just the hotel word on it. They've left the sign and taken the, the name off. Um, I want to simulate that that sign. And to do that, I'm going to use this Blair line. Uh, laser cut billboard. This is a wood kit, and this is one that's made that you, so that you can do it yourself and choose your own custom lettering for it. And uh, I'm uh, just going to show you what is in this kit. You can see here a uh, set of instructions and a uh, very, very simple kit. Uh, I mean, it's very delicate, so it's going to be very careful with it, but, uh, but a simple kit in that it literally only has uh, about seven pieces to the to the sign structure itself. And then, of course, it has all these letters that uh, we can cut out and, and put on it. A little set of instructions literally shows you just how simple this kit is. So uh, you, you, if you've never done a, a, a wood kit, uh, these are pretty simple. Uh, I actually have a video on doing a Craftsman wood structure kit. And if you want a uh, little guidance on doing a wood kit, I'd advise you to go look at that video that I did several weeks ago, and that'll show you exactly how I do this. I'm not going to do this on camera, but but uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this together, and then we'll come back and take a look at it. I've actually accomplished several things since my last segment, uh, but I want to show you some of the things that I've done. First, I showed you in the last segment uh, that I was going to be building this rooftop sign. And uh, here is the, the completed sign. Uh, I just put the sign together exactly per the instructions from, uh, from, from Blair Line. Um, pretty simple gluing together, a simple little wood structure. Um, painted, I painted the support structure uh, with a light coat of gray primer. Actually painted the same uh, primer on to the letters themselves. Then I came back with a, a, a wood color. I think it was actually called leather that I painted the support structure with. I painted the letters with a bright red. Uh, of course, I didn't want them to be a, too bright of a red, but I wanted to start with a base red. And then I came back and dry brushed them with a very light gray and then dusted them with some weathering powder, some pan pastels, uh, just to give them a weathered look. So that's our, our roof type so, top sign, and it's uh, it's looking pretty good. Then the roof itself, I've actually uh, done a lot of work on also. This is that same styrene roof that you've seen on the very top uh, for for some time. I literally came in and roofed the, uh, the roof, covered the roof with... Um, a strip roofing that I made out of simple paper, just printer paper. I have this exacto paper cutter uh, that is wonderful for cutting strips of paper like this. These were narrow strips. These are four scale feet wide, and then I lapped them a foot so that you actually see three scale feet showing with each one. So that's a, that's a pretty narrow. That's about a quarter of an inch strip. And uh, this, as you can tell, it matches my cutting mat. I bought these together. Uh, but I'm just going to show you how this works. This literally, of course, I don't have this paper marked, but I just I can mark uh, my, uh, my width that I want on each end, line it up right along this ruler. And this cutting edge, if I don't push down on it, doesn't do anything. Uh, but when I've got it where I want it, I push down on this and just give a nice cut. And it's got a really good, sharp, rolling blade. And you get a very nice, straight cut. Cut. So if you're wanting to cut paper for roofing or for any other purpose for your model railroading, uh, those are a great tool to have. And you can get those in scrapbook stores pretty much anywhere. Pretty standard for scrapbookers uh, like my wife. So I, I, cut those, uh, I cut those strips of paper. I, I just glued them onto the uh, styrene roof with some contact cement. And, and then I came back and, and let that dry good. And I painted it with a real light coat of a very light gray. I believe this is Model Master's light ghost gray. 
Uh, and then I, once that had dried really, really well, I came in and weathered this with some pan pastels. I just used some black to go along the seams uh, and kind of make them stand out and give them a little bit of a dirty look. And then used some, uh, some brown color. Uh, I believe it was actually this burnt sienna uh, pan pastel that I used just to add some dirty spots. And uh, of course you see that I uh, put some of those right underneath where the sign is going to be. The sign will sit right uh, in this area here. And then I'm going to come back. I've got some, uh, some cast details, uh, some air conditioners, rooftop ducts that I'm going to, to add to this just to give a little detail to the roof. And uh, I, I'm not going to do a lot of, uh, of extra work to this roof because, as I've told you several times, this is on the upper deck. It sets up pretty high. I don't think you'll see this roof very well, uh, but I want to make sure that if you do see it, it that it looks good. Um, of course, this roof goes in this upper section of the structure, and this below the upper section and on the top of the main section, I've got some roof that shows here. Uh, but again, this is going to be behind the cornice of the uh, of the lower main section. I don't think you'll ever see this. So literally, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come in and mask this off and paint this a grimy black, just to hide the you know the white uh, that you see here. That will 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 keep it from standing out. I'm not going to add any other deal to, detail to that. Just going to paint it the uh, the bright white. You can also see that I came in here and. Uh, the strips that hold the roof in place, I painted them to, to match the trim on the cornice of the upper section. Uh, here's the main section. I've not done that yet on this section. You can still these are, see that these are still white, but I'm going to paint them in just a little bit uh, this same earth color that uh, the cornice is on the, the main section. And that'll hide those. You'll, you'll never even notice that those strips are there. You'll just think that they are part of the cornice. So I'm going to be working on that. I also wanted to show you what I have done so far on this interior for the first floor lobby. Um, i got some little pieces in here that are just sitting in here. I'll show you in a minute. Um, I built this shadow box very much the same way I built the shadow boxes that you saw in the previous video uh, from the other floors, except it's just a lot larger, uh, where I used wallpaper that I had printed on paper and glued to the inside. Uh, for the lobby, I printed out a, a, a marble print on paper and glued it in the same way. I also went and found some photographs of some neat old antique brass elevator doors and you see I've included two elevator doors here right inside the lobby. This is right where the front door is. So the front door will look right in onto these elevators. This, of course, will be your front desk. This is literally just made with uh, some pieces of uh, 40,000 styrene that are stacked together, glued together, sanded down to be nice and, and smooth and, and rectangular. And then I took this same marble paper and glued it to the outside of the desk. Uh, so that we got the, the same look there. Uh, I'm waiting on some new figures to come. I kind of ran out of the, some of the figures that I needed, uh, but I've got some standing figures in suits that'll be behind the desk. And then, of course, I'll use some pedestrians with luggage to be standing in front of the desk here. And then I've also made some details for this area over here. Um, in the background, I want to give some depth here uh, that I'm going to do without uh, without doing any actually modeling in the background. I'm going to make some foreground details that I'll show you in a second. But in the background, just to add depth, I printed out this picture. Uh, this is actually a picture of a hotel lobby. Uh, and you can see it, it looks like you're going down a hall into a larger area there. Uh, again, you're going to be viewing this from small windows from outside, so you're not going to see a lot of the detail. And uh, But it just it gives you that sense that that room turns and goes down this hallway. So I'm going to finish cutting this out and I'm going to glue that into place right there uh, just with regular old white glue and uh, that'll give some some depth. Uh, in front of that then are going to be these items that I have made. Uh, you see here I made some some sofas uh, and again these are just made out of scraps of styrene uh, that I glued together into the basic shape and then used some standing sticks to kind of sand the corners around and make them the uh, the shape that I want. Uh, and I made three of these sofas, painted them this dark brown. Uh, just thought that would 
maybe give the most contrast and kind of stand out. And then I also made this table. Again, just some scraps of styrene that are stacked for the lower section and then a slightly larger one that I cut nice and square for the upper section. Sanded them all down nice and smooth. I painted them that same chocolate cover, uh, that same chocolate color. Uh, and then uh, used a little bit of light gray and just dry brushed on the top of it to give it a little bit of a, either marble or a wood grain look. And then uh, I've got some seated figures that I will uh, position here uh, that will give this hotel lobby a, uh, a real sense of life. And I'm just going to tack all of these pieces of furniture and these figures, if I could get her to sit up, I'm just going to tack them in place with some uh, some canopy glue. Uh, that's my kind of my favorite go-to glue for uh, for putting figures in place because it is a, a it's a glue that uh, while it starts white, it dries clear, uh, so you don't see it. Um, but also. It, uh, it remains tacky. It doesn't get uh, brittle or rigid uh, like Elmer's glue will. It remains uh, a tacky, flexible. Uh, and so if you ever want to remove and, and move your figures, you can do so. So you see there, you kind of get a little bit of a sense of, of uh, how that's going to look. I, I can't tilt that too much because... Uh, because my figures will fall just like that. Uh, but I'll, I'll glue those things in place, get my other couple of figures, and that's going to give some nice detail and some nice depth. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, my last couple of pieces here, just to add some detail, is I made some, some potted trees. Uh, these are literally just some little scraps off of some super tree armatures uh, that I, I painted a gray color. Uh, I added a little bit of leaf flake. Uh, to it and then uh, the the pots are just little scraps of balsa wood that I cut to square uh, and uh, painted used kind of a yeah, boxcar red paint and then uh, dry brushed it with some gray to give it a little bit of a terracotta look so uh, I'll put those in there to also add a little more uh, detail to uh, to that lobby. So I think that's going to look really, really good. Uh, looking through the windows, I think it's going to make a very nice detailed lobby, and uh, I think it's going to, I think it's really going to be convincing, going to add some life to the hotel. I'm working on the awnings for the front of the hotel now, and you see I've got a piece of uh, the scrap that I cut away from uh, the kit bash process just to practice with. And uh, I've worked a little bit at making some awnings out of paper. And I've come up with this one that I think looks really good. It really uh, represents the awnings that are on the actual Holt Hotel pretty well. Now, it's not glued on here. It's just sitting on here. Uh, but I'm going to show you how I am making these because uh, this process, I think, is going to work pretty well. Literally... What I have done here is I measured the width of the window itself, which is 10 and a half scale feet, and then the height of these little windows, which is how far I want the awnings to come down. And then I have measured and made some marks here on this green paper. And uh, you see here, this middle section is the width of the window, 10 and a half feet. And then this width here is actually two and a half feet, which is the, the width that I need in order to make the angle part uh, on the, the sides of the awning. Uh, these awnings come down at about a 30 degree angle, at least that's what I'm going to use is a 30 degree angle. And so after playing with this one that I showed you a moment ago and getting it the way I want, I'm literally going to use it uh, to, uh, to mark uh, the, um, the dozen awnings that I need on this paper uh, up through here and then of course I just need to cut along this side I'll need to cut the little notches out uh, for the sides and then these two lines are, are just my fold lines. I'm going to show you just a little trick on uh, folding paper whenever you're working with paper sometimes uh, you can do a number of modeling things with paper or cardstock when you need to make a nice straight crisp fold especially on something very small like this uh, you can see I've got my folding line here, and I'm just going to take a ruler, and I'm going to put it right up against that folding line. I want to be able to see the line, but I don't want to be able to see any paper 
uh, beyond the line towards the inside. And with my ruler perfectly on that straight line, I'm going to take the uh, sharp edge of a hobby knife and get underneath that paper, get it right up close to my, uh, next to my ruler, and then just fold it up. And um, that's going to give me a very nice, crisp crease in that paper uh, that's going to be perfectly straight with wherever my ruler was. I'll come over here to the other side and uh, I'll just repeat that process. And there you see, even though I kind of flattened that one out, the crease is there. So all I got to do is kind of stick it back up. And there you can see I've got that awning folded uh, and ready to be installed on the structure. I've got all of my awnings cut out and you see I've gone back to this scrap piece uh, just to test how I was going to install them and uh, I found out a process that's just really easy and is really working well so I'm going to show you how uh, I installed this one and how I'm going to install these on the, uh, the hotel itself right now literally what I am doing is I am just using white glue uh, I've got to get these the right direction because this little sides one side is longer than the other because it's a 30 degree angle not a 45 uh, I'm using the handle of an old super fine micro brush that was used and I literally just twisted the little head off of it It gives you a very very fine point but it's also plastic so it's great for using any kind of glue uh, an applicator for glue because it doesn't soak up the glue like a, a toothpick would. So I get just a fine droplet of glue on my, uh, on my little applicator here, and I'm just going to put a very, very fine line just on the edge of this paper. Uh, now the one edge will go along the building, uh, along the top of the windows, and then these two little short edges will go down along the sides. And I just need to trace them out. It doesn't take much at all. Um, I'm going to have to turn my structure because otherwise I'm going to be working left-handed. And uh, I'm going to take a pair of tweezers. And I'm going to start uh, actually over here on this end. I think I'll make my life easier later. And I'm just going to glue that in right along that top right there. And I'm going to tuck in the edges just a little little there to make sure that they are in the right spot and there is my awning and, and that's all there is to it uh, now I have uh, a dozen of these to install so I'm going to work on that and there we have all of our awnings installed and I'm going to allow these to dry for just about an hour or so just to make sure that white glue is really uh, well dried and set up and then we're going to go install this on the layout and we'll see how that looks. This is the location where the Holt Hotel is going to be on my layout. Uh, I have come in uh, in the area where uh, the light wires need to go and I've drilled a 5 16 hole right here. I marked the backdrop a little bit with my drill as I was doing that, but that's going to be behind the structure so uh, you, it won't matter, you won't see it. Now I'm going to bring my structure in and I've got all of these little wire plugs that have to be fed down into that hole. Try to do this so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. And last one. Okay, there's my wires are all started down through there. I'm reaching underneath and pulling them through as I go here. Which one is long? There we go. And we'll set the hotel in place. Now I'm going to go underneath and show you how we plug this in. Here we are underneath the upper deck of the layout, underneath the bench work here. And here you can see my just plug hub. I literally uh, just screwed it to the bottom of uh, the sub road bed, the bench here. Uh, the screws that uh, screw the hub in place literally just stick through less than a quarter of an inch. So it was easy to screw it in here and uh, not cause any kind of damage up above. Uh, you see the power cord runs back here behind the backdrop of the lower deck and just runs down into a power strip. 
just below the uh, the lower deck there and is plugged in. And here are my plugs for the uh, the wires here for uh, the lights themselves. I have these numbered because I wanted them in in a certain order. You see, you just come up here and plug them in, and uh, not sure how easily I can do that because the camera's kind of in my way. Uh, but you see, I, we'll just plug them in right here. We have the adjustment knobs here to adjust the brightness. And uh, we will have our structure lit and uh, ready for display. Here's a nighttime shot of the Holt Hotel. Uh, you have to uh, adjust the lights differently for when it's on camera than when you're looking at it live. Uh, live, right now, these lights are, are pretty dim. Although they certainly do show up in this lower light. Uh, but they uh, tend to kind of bleed and, and wash out on camera, so I've turned them down a little bit just to get a better effect on film. But uh, you get the idea here of kind of what the lighting effect in uh, nighttime mode looks like. And now let me show you some shots with the lights on from some different angles and showing you more of the whole scene as it, uh, as it is at the moment. And here's a little different angle, a little wider view, kind of gives you a sense of this scene as it's just beginning to come together. Uh, this warehouse uh, kind of in the foreground will partially obscure just the end of the Holt Hotel. Uh, there will be a street that runs in front of the hotel here and curves and goes back to the side. And that old warehouse will obscure where the street goes out of sight in the scene. This isn't going to be the exact warehouse, although I am going to use another example of this same kit built like this painted a different color all the doors are going to be bricked up this office part uh, won't be here so just this part uh, will sit out here i'll be filling in the uh, backdrop over here between dorchester grain the holt hotel and some on off to the left with some more flats and uh, some low relief structures as well as probably uh, some photos for uh, the backdrop here to give you some more of the uh, downtown Wichita Falls skyline view and I think the scene is going to uh, complete really well but the kind of focal center of the skyline is going to be the Holt Hotel a very recognizable historic old structure near the yard in Wichita Falls and uh, I'm glad to have this structure on the layout. It has taken a long time. <laughs> I've been working on this structure for well over two months off and on, but uh, I am very, very pleased with the way that it came out and uh, it was time well spent. I hope you've enjoyed this video and this series on kit bashing the Holt Hotel. My kit bash didn't come out as an exact replica of the prototype, but it does make a very nice representation of the Holt Hotel in Wichita Falls. In fact, I believe that anyone who's familiar with downtown Wichita Falls would immediately recognize my structure as the Holt Hotel. If you've enjoyed this video, then be sure and give it a thumbs up down below. And also share it on your social media, on Facebook Model Railroad groups, on Model Railroading forums, anywhere where Model Railroaders hang out. You never know when someone else might benefit from something that we've shared in this video and in this series. Also, check out the description to this video down below, where in addition to my usual Amazon Pick of the Week, you'll also see a link to my brand new Amazon Influencers page. I was recently accepted into the Amazon Influencers community, and I'm excited to bring you this page, which features links to a number of products for model railroaders, for photography and video making, as well as other great products that I find useful and interesting, and I think you will as well. In addition to that, you can use the search feature and shop on that page just like you normally would on Amazon. The features and the pricing are exactly the same as it would be on a normal Amazon page, but by shopping through that page, you help support Ron's Trains and Things with every purchase. So be sure and check out that affiliate link. I would really appreciate it. And while you're in the description, check out my Patreon page as well. There you can see the rewards and incentives that I offer to those who support Ron's Trains and Things on an ongoing basis. If you did enjoy this series of videos, then you'll want to check out the playlist in this card right up here where you'll find more videos that I know you'll enjoy as well. Well, I'll be back next Tuesday with another great model building segment, and I look forward to seeing you then.
10, Lizzie? 